That's Greek. It means welcome to Athens. Yes, my dear friends, welcome one and all. My name is Robin. Robin Goodfellow, but my friends call me Puck. Will you be my friends? Yes. Will you? Yes. Good. Good fellows. You can call me Puck too. And these goblins and pixies of the night, hello to you too. Hello, Puck. See, they're my friend too. Now have gather around. If I've got a tale to tell you all, everyone in the city is getting really excited. Why is that, Puck? I'm glad you asked me that, Cobweb. The city is excited because the Duke of Athens... I, Theseus, has just won a great battle. Hooray! And has returned in triumph with his conquered queen. I, Hippolyta, queen of the Amazons. Ooh! And not only that. What else? What else? Come on, look, tell us. Shh. They're going to get married. Married? You mean there's going to be a wedding? A royal wedding. A royal wedding. A royal wedding. A royal wedding. It will soon be 
be our wedding day, there are only four days to go. I want the whole of Athens to join in on our celebrations. Excuse me, my lord. Yes, to the street. There's a rather good good old Aegeus waiting outside to see you. Shall I tell him to go away? What does he want? I think it's something about the wedding. Bring him in then. Perhaps it's about an entertainment he's planning for the wedding feast. I hope it's nothing too boring. Lord Aegeus. Hello, Aegeus. You're looking rather glum today. Indeed I am glum, noble lord. Indeed I am. You should be happy. I'm getting mad, you know. Now, what's the matter? I bring you a complaint, a wedding complaint, against my own daughter, Hermia. Stay there, Hermia. Proceed. Stand forth, Demetrius. This man, my noble lord, this man has my consent to marry my daughter. I don't see much of a problem so far, Aegeus. Stand forth, Lysander. But this man, my gracious duke, this man, Lysander, has stolen my Hermia's heart. How? He sings her songs, he writes her poems, he showers her with gifts. In short, he bewitches her. He makes her go against her own father's choice for a husband. I'm beginning to get the picture. My lord, I will not permit this disobedience. I demand justice. I have arranged my daughter to marry Demetrius and not Lysander. I see. She must agree to his wedding here and now. Otherwise, I beg leave to... Oh. I beg leave to dispose of her as I please. My Demetrius or die. What do you think, Hermia? You do know that under the ancient law of Athens, you must marry the man your father chooses, and Demetrius is a worthy man, a good catch. So is Lysander. I'm sure he is, but in this case, your father's choice must be the worthier. I wish my father could see through my eyes. Hermia, you should put yourself in your father's place, see things as he does, and above all, respect your father's wishes. Your Grace, please tell me, what is the worst punishment I can expect? What will happen to me if I choose Lysander and not Demetrius? The worst punishment is to be put to death. There's nothing I can do about that. This is according to the ancient law of Athens. Or you could be sent to a nunnery and never see any man, not even Lysander, ever again. I'll be a nun then. Hold on, hold on. The next new moon is in four days' time. That will be my wedding day. Decide by then, either marry Demetrius, live in a convent for the rest of your life, or Come on, Femi, and don't be silly. Lysander, leave off. No, you leave off. Your father wants that much. Why don't you marry him instead? Lysander! My lord, in every way, I think I'm a good enough match for Demetrius, and I love Hermie more than he does much more. It's just me, not him. You know the law. Yes, but have you heard that Demetrius was recently going out with Helena, Hermia's best friend? He has wooed her from her heart. I said, let me stay with Hermie and let Demetrius be with Helena. Hmm. I've heard about this as well, but my mind has been so full of my own wedding plans that I've forgotten about it. Mm. Aegeus, Demetrius, come with me. Let us talk in private. Come, my Hippolyta. Hermia, I think you'd better fit your fancy to your father's will. Four days. Oh well, the force of true love never did look smooth. Why should someone else choose you, love? It's not fair!
Take the register. Here is the scroll of all the names of all the men in Athens, but fifth they find our play. Answer as I call, Nick Bottom the Weaver. Ready, name my part of the scene. You, Nick Bottom, must play Pyramus. What is Pyramus? A lover or a tyrant? A lover who kills himself must get and leave alone. Oh yes, that's fine, I'll take some play. Step forward, Nick Bottom. The raging rocks and shivering shocks shall break the locks of prison gates. Amphibious cars shall shine from far and make and mar the foolish fates. There's a bit of fake news for you. The play, you know. Only Bottom could do justice to Pyramus. Francis flew the bellows in London. Here, Peter Quince. You must play Thisby. <coughs> Thisby? But Thisby's a girl. Oh, no, I can't play a girl. Look, I've got a bird coming. You'll have to do. You can always wear a mask to hide your face. Remember, speak with a high voice. I know, I know. I'll play this beside as well. I just have a sweet voice like this. Oh, this girl, this girl. Oh, Pyramus is a nice, this girl, I'm really like it. No, no, no. You must play Pyramus. Blue, you are this big. Bobby Star, Belinda Taylor. Here, he's going. You must play this big mother and the moon. Tom Snell, the Tinker. Here, Peter Quint. You must play Pyramus's father and the wall. I will play Disby's father. Snug, you will play the lion. <clears throat> Have you got all the lions part written down? Because it takes me a while to learn things, you know. Don't worry, Snug, just make it up. It's only more. Eh? I know, I know. I'll play the lion's part as well. I'll roar so loud that the Duke will say, let him roar again. Let him roar again. Roar! Don't be silly, Bob. You'll frighten the ladies. Then I'll roar softly like a dove. Roar! <laughs> no more roaring, Bottom. <clears throat> you must play Pyramus, and only Pyramus. He is a sweet faced man, a handsome man, and only Bottom can play him. Okay, okay, I'll do it. Now, what bit are our best to play in? Whatever you like. So, have we all got our parts? <laughs> yes, yes, please, Prince. Go away and learn them well. We will meet again tomorrow night at the Duke's Oak. So we can rehearse the most lamentable comedy and cruel death of Pyramus and Disby. Pyramus and Disby!
Latin enough to the royal wedding. Look, Oberon, if you can join us in our dance and the hymn, you can join us in the moonlight celebrations. If not, should me, and I'll keep out your way. Give me the boy and I'll go with you. Not for your fairy kingdom. Fairies, away. This will get worse if I longer stay. Fine, go in your own way, but you will not leave here tonight until I've got my revenge on you. My gentle pup, come here. Do you remember once I sat upon a rock? and heard a mermaid on a dolphin's back uttering such dulcet and unharmonious breath that the rude sea grew civil at her song and certain stars shot madly from her spheres just to hear the sea maid's music? Um, yeah. That time I saw, but thou couldst not, flying between the cold moon and earth, keep it all armed, a certain hazy tub, as fair vessel thrown by the west and loosed his love shaft smartly from his bow, as it should pierce one hundred thousand hearts. Yet mark and I where the bolt of Cupid fell, it fell upon a little western flower. The purple one? Yes, Puck, the purple one. Oh, what's it called again? Loving... Idleness, Puck, loving idleness. That's the one. And the juice of this flower, when laid upon sleeping eyelids, will make man or woman enjoy the next living creature it sees. Fetch me this herb. I'll put a girdle around here for forty minutes. Once they have this magical juice, I'll wait for Titania to fall asleep, then drip, drip, drop. When she awakes, the next thing she sees will be her true love. Oh, I hope it's something vile. And I won't undo the spell until she gives me the boy. But what is this noise? I'll stay invisible and watch for a while. Listen, Helma, I do not love you, so go away. Now where are Lysander and Hermia? I must kill Lysander so Hermia can be mine. But Demetrius, he said you love me. Look, I'm your spaniel, a devoted dog. Well, but, oh, please let me be near you. I feel sick just looking at you. I am sick when I can't see you. Look, I'm warning you. Go away or I'll run away and leave you to the mercy of wild beasts. The wildest beasts can't frighten me when I'm with you. This is your last warning. Go away or I might be trapped to get nasty.
when you wake, do it for your true love's take. So when you wake, it is your dear. So wait when something vile is there. Friday. Yes! The moonshine just shined that night! 
Well, then leave a window open and let the moonshine shine through. Or someone could disguise themselves as a bush and hold up a lighted lantern and represent themselves as a bush. Yes, agreed. Uh, right, that's all that's it. Come sit down and we'll begin. What have we here to do this evening, Titania? And with your theatricals? Oh, this be the flowers of odious say. Odious, odious, not odious. Oh, the safe and sweet, my dearest, this be dear. But wait, a voice, stay here and I'll be back in the tea. This is the strangest pyramid you ever did see. I think I should have some fun here. Is it my bit yet? Yes, Pyramus has gone on to see what the noise is. He'll come back in a minute. Get on with it! Oh, Pyramus. Pyramus. Pyramus? Oh, Pyramus, I'll meet you with Ninny's too! Ninus, you Ninny, not Ninny, Ninus! <coughs> but it says Ninny in the script, look. Anyway, you don't say that yet. You have to give Pyramus his cue to come back on. His cue is never tired. Oh, it's true, it's the truest horse, but never tired. Oh, come on, Pyramus. <laughs> Oh, fire, fair, fair, fist, bear in the yard. Eat, yard, eat, all. <laughs> oh, watch this in a strange room. Oh, we'll take quick one away. Help! Hey, lad, where are you going? Is this a trick? I try to scare me. Oh, bottom, you've changed. What's that thing on your head? What do you mean, what's on my head? What do you think's on my head? An ass's head or something. <laughs> Bless thee, bottom, bless thee, thou art translated! Translate, translated, get off. Look, I know it's a game. I'm not scared at all, you know. Here, alone, in the wood. They're trying to make an ass out of me. Well, they were fighting on bottom of the week, but I'll sing a song dog room, I'm not scared.
<laughs> this works out even better than a coat pop. And did you also put the love juice in the Athenian's eyes as I told you? Oh yes, I did it while he was sleeping. The girl was right by his side. So when they awake, they will be in love. Stand aside. Here comes the very Athenian. Oh dear, this is the right woman. But she's with a different man. Whoops. Why do you shout at someone who loves you? I'll do more than shout at you. Don't tell me what you've done to Lysander. You killed him, haven't you? Don't be silly. You killed him in his sleep. You killed my Lysander. That's not my dream. You're on the point of the snake. I think you're out of sight in the I haven't killed Lysander. He's made him dead for a long time. Oh, please tell me to lie. And if I could, what's it worth? What's it worth? It's worth the privilege never to see me again, whether he's dead or not. Heck, what have you done? You put the love juice in the wrong man's eyes. I'm sorry. Sorry? Get about the wood and find Helena of Athens. Quick! I go, I go, look how I go, smitten than the arrow from the Tartar's bow. Flower of this purple dye, hit with Cupid's archery. Sink in the apple of his eye, so when he wait, if she be by, let beg her for remedy. Yes, beg for the forgiveness of Helena. <coughs> Captain of our fairy bands, Helena is here at hand, and you, Lysander, I'm going to fix me her love. Shh, stand aside. The noise they make will cause Demetrius to wait. But Sire, won't Helena then have two people chasing after her? Mm -hmm. Great, this brought on the scene that before ridiculously. Uh, why can't you leave me alone? I know it's her me you love. I've heard you say those sweet things to her. Yes, but I didn't know what I wanted though. Well, I know what I want now. Go away. Look, the mate she was so tired and he doesn't love you. Oh, Helen, God bless. Oh. Never perfect divine. What? To what, my love, shall I compare your eyes? Hang on a minute. Thy crystal is muddy, thy writing show, thy lips are kissing cherries, tempting love. Oh, Helena, I love you so much. No, you don't. You love her, yet. Oh, spite. Oh, hell. No, you're both making fun of me. No, no we're not. Yes, you jolly well are. You're both bribes and love, and both love her, yet. Now they throw us to mock Helena. Look, Lysander, you keep on me, and leave Helena for me. Helena, take no notice. Look, here comes your own love. Lysander! Thank goodness you're safe, Lysander. Why did you leave me alone in the woods? Don't you realise I hate you? What? Why did you think I left you? Hate me? What do you mean? It's me, Helena, Helena. Now she's running in too. Lysander, remember me. Hermia, you're Hermia. You are Lysander, aren't you? I see what's happening here. I can see quite clearly. All three of you are getting up on me. You're treating me as a joke to make me cry. Helena, that's not true. I love you. All my life I do. I love you more than he does. What have you done? <laughs> you juggler. You canker blossom. You you feed my blood. You saw my lace on the tartan. How dare you, little puppet? Puppet? Me? That's rich coming from a painted maple like you. <laughs> ah, but Tony, don't be bitter with me. I've always loved you. Let me take my foolish love quietly back to Athens. Who's stopping you? A foolish child that I leave here behind. Lysander? No, Demetrius. Don't worry, Hermia. She won't. No, no, don't worry, Hermia. She won't frighten you. <laughs> no, I won't let her. Get off! Don't ever hurt me. She was a little vixen at school. Little? I get her. Why did I insult me? me? Let me at her. Leave my height out of this, out of this you gambling gargoyle.
I'm feeling tired now, like position of sleep is come upon me. Sleep, my sweet love, and let me wind you in my arms. How I love you, how I do so, how I adore you.
that moment. Oh, Peter Quiz, Francis Blue. Oh, great, they've gone up and let me here to sleep. But wait, what rare vision I've had. A dream. What? I'll get Peter Quiz to write, write a ballad about me. We'll call it Bottom Street because I have no bottom. Now, where are those lads? Curse your stones for this evening. 
I think the wall should cut him back. No, sir, no, you see, deceiving me, deceiving me, excuse me. You're coming now, I'm about to change the wall, see? Mm -hmm. Oh, Paul, you turned me off for keeping me apart for two of us. But when I hear a voice, I go to the chimney to the back, I can hear my face being saved. My love! Oh, kiss me, because I love the spider wall. <laughs> Let's meet me at Ninny's tomb. Linus! At Linus' tomb, straight away. Tide life, tide death, come without delay. <laughs> Thus have I, all my part discharged and being done, this wall away does go. This is the silliest stuff that I ever heard. You ladies, don't be afraid, because when the lion raises his loudest roar, don't worry, it's only me, it's not the joiner. What a gentle beast, and one with a good conscience as well. My best beast, I am a soul. All that I have to tell you is that this lantern is the moon, I'm the man in the moon, this thorn bush is my thorn bush, and this dog my dog. Thank you. 
and give it our blessing and magical protection. First we heard just on thy rope, each word a wobbling note. Hand in hand with very grace, we will sing and bless this place. Now until the break of day, through this house each fairy stray, to the best bride bed will we, which that by his blessed be. Trip away, make no stay, now until the break of day.